Hello friends, this is Infinite Paradox Fanfic. How are you all? So we are back with an amazing series on what if Deku had the power of Escanor, power of pride. After his dreams are crushed by All Might, Izuku decides to end it all. But, before he could someone stops him. That person gives Izuku a gift, the power to become a hero. With this power, nothing will stand in Izuku's way. But before we start, if you want more stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if possible share this video with your friends. Now let's start the story. All men are not created equal. No one knew this phrase better than Izuku Midoriya. He learned this at the age of four when everyone he gained their quirk. In a society filled with superpowered people, he was among the 20% without a quirk. He had spent the last 13 years of his life dreaming of becoming a hero. The only thing was no one believed in him. In a world based around quirks not having one meant everyone looked down on you, be it with contempt or pity. Even his childhood friend Bakugo Katsuki stopped being his friend and started to bully and ridicule him. No one helped him no one stopped the abuse teachers didn't care and he didn't tell his mother in fear of making her worry more than she had to. He just wanted one person to believe in him to tell him those five magic words. This all culminates to this day. The day his dreams were finally crushed. No not without a quirk, All Might paused, it's okay to dream but make sure it is realistic. He stated as he left Izuku on the rooftop that they had landed on. Izuku was devastated. Even the greatest hero, the one he looked up to with all his heart, had said that his dream was foolish. He hurt so much his chest felt so tight it burned. He wasn't just crying anymore he was wailing. The pain was so much worse than all the beatings he had gotten from Bakugo over the years. Suddenly his head snapped up as he looked up at the edge of the roof, and Bakugo's words from earlier today came flooding back into his head. If you want a quirk so bad, that's easy why don't you take a swan dive off the roof and pray for a quirk in the next life. Izuku slowly stood and started walking over to the edge of the roof, he slowly put his backpack down and slowly took off his shoes, he then climbed over the railing. And had one last thought before he jumped. Sorry mom, wish I was just a little stronger. Right before he let go someone spoke to him. That seems pretty dangerous child, the person said. Izuku froze and slowly turned back around and there standing behind him was a man. The man looked somewhere between 6 feet 0 and 6 feet 2, he was wearing a white suit with a red button-down shirt that had a black tie and he also had blonde hair combed backward. He also had a scar that went from just above his left eyebrow and went diagonally down his face to his right cheek where it ended equal to his mouth. Look up Lucifer Morningstar comic version. He was just standing in the middle of the roof with his hands in his pockets and was looking at him with a small smirk. Izuku knew he looked like a deer caught in headlights and started stuttering not knowing what to say to this new mysterious person. I I don't know w what why you were talking about, Izuku tried to start but was cut off. It's alright boy, I know who you are why you are standing on the edge of this rooftop and what drove you to do it in the first place, the man said. You do? Izuku asked, confused about how this man knew all that. Yes, you don't need to worry, I am not here to hurt you or anything of the sort. I just wanted to talk to you, the man said with a smile. He then looked Izuku in the eye and asked, Now, would you please come back to this side of the railing so we can talk? Izuku slowly nodded and climbed back over and put his shoes back on and sat next to his backpack while the man had made a wooden chair out of nothing and sat down across from Izuku. Instantly, after the man had made the chair Izuku had started a muttering fit trying to analyze the man's quirk. The man just started chuckling seeing the display. Izuku noticed this and started blushing and apologizing, but the man just waved him off reassuring him it was fine. So, who are you? Izuku asked, and what do you want from me? Well, my name is Lucifer Morningstar and what I want is to help you reach your dream, stated the now named Lucifer. Lucifer, Lucifer where have I heard that name before? Izuku questioned aloud. A simpler name I have is the devil, Lucifer said with a small smile. The devil? You're the devil? Izuku asked, somewhat skeptical, and you also want to help me become a hero? Yes, both of those things are true, but since you are a bit skeptical let me show off a little bit, Lucifer said as he stood up unfurled his wings, and made a sword out of nothing in one hand and a ball of fire in the other. Do you believe me now? Lucifer asked with a smirk. Izuku was shocked this person just used three different quirks at once. Amazing. Maybe you are the devil, Izuku said, but still you want to make me a hero? Yes, 
There was something about you that drew me to you. I then decided to learn about you, and I was not disappointed. You have a true hero's spirit. You want to do nothing more than to save people and make sure they feel safe. You don't care about fame or fortune at all. In my eyes that makes you have the greatest potential to become a hero, Lucifer prays. Izuku started blushing and stuttering saying that he shouldn't be getting that kind of praise, even from the devil no less. You sell yourself short child and I wish to help you achieve your desire and become a hero, and not just a hero but the greatest hero, Lucifer said with a smile. How are you going to do that? Izuku asked quietly trying to wrap his head around this whole situation. That is a simple matter, Lucifer assured. I have been granted the power to bend reality to my will and with it, I will give you power. With that power, you can prove to the world and yourself that can stand on their stage, Lucifer stated. Now do you have any idea for what kind of power you want? Lucifer asked. I, I have no idea, there are just so many, Izuku exclaimed. He had no idea how he could pick a quirk to give himself. I actually have one in mind if you are willing to trust me to give you a power, Lucifer asked. Okay yeah sure I trust you. I mean you already stopped me from making a terrible mistake, Izuku said with a shaky smile. Lucifer just smiled back at him. Okay, are you ready? He asked Izuku with a reassuring smile. Yes, Izuku said as he prepared himself. At that moment a blinding light appeared in Lucifer's hand as he stood up and walked towards Izuku. Izuku had his eyes closed because of the blinding light. It was then the devil pierced Izuku's chest with the hand that wielded light. Izuku threw his head back and screamed in pain. It felt like he was burning alive. That all his insides were melting, and his skin was melting off. As soon as the pain came though it disappeared. Izuku was sitting there panting trying to calm his racing heart and to get his breathing under control. What kind of power did you give me? He asked Lucifer. There were multiple factors in me choosing your power. Lucifer started to explain what he had done. I studied you and saw who you were as a person. I know about your heroic spirit. I know you are a good person. I also know that you have committed very little sins, especially any of the seven deadly sins. I saw out of everything that what you needed the most was pride. And with that, I took a couple of different powers from throughout the multiverse and put them together to give you power greater than even your all might. Lucifer told Izuku. Izuku just looked at him in awe. What kind of quirk did you give me? He finally asked. Lucifer just smiled at him. Your new power comes in multiple parts that I will explain. You should probably take notes. The second that was out of his mouth Izuku had whipped out his notebook with a pen and was ready and waiting. Lucifer just sweat dropped at that but didn't say anything about it. Okay the first and most important fact about your new power. Yes that is what it is. You don't have a quirk still this is something entirely different he said before Izuku could interrupt. Okay where was I? Oh yes the first and most important aspect of your power is that it is a stockpiler. What it stockpiles is sunlight. When I gave it to you, I already had some stored away. Every second you are in the sun it stores more and more power. When you access that power, your body will change. Your overall height, weight, and muscle mass will increase exponentially. With it, you will have incredible power. All of your physical aspects will increase exponentially. This includes your strength, speed, stamina, durability, endurance just to name a few. If you stay in the sun to keep stockpiling and train your body, you will be unbeatable. Let me also say this the higher the sun is in the sky the faster you will stockpile. The next aspect of your power is that you will give off intense heat like the heat of the sun itself. You can use that to make attacks be it making miniature suns to throw or make weapons it is up to you. He explained to Izuku whose head was spinning from all the knowledge he had just gained from the explanation of his new power. That is when his eyes widened. Wait you said my power came from different places in the multiverse, what were they originally? He asked with nothing but interest and curiosity in his tone. Lucifer smiled at that, your power came from mixing two different powers together, they were from Superman who is from my own original universe and Escanor who was the lion sin of pride from the team calling themselves the seven deadly sins from a different universe. You gain most of your powers and abilities from Escanor. The only thing I gave you from Superman was the ability to store the sunlight. Escanor couldn't store it and gained more power and grew stronger and hotter with the rising sun. He peaked at noon, then he slowly powered down through the rest of the day and at night had no power. He also couldn't turn it off during the day. I made sure you didn't have his weaknesses. 
you will be able to control how much power and output you have. The lowest you can output at a time though would be 10%. Don't worry you can handle all your power as you wish so I made sure your body could handle it when I gave you your power. Izuku just nodded at him seemingly satisfied, but then he gained a look of confusion. What's the catch for this power? Izuku asked him. The devil just studied him for a second. I'm not evil like they say I just wanted my freedom more than anything, that was my desire. Yours is to be a hero, what's wrong with helping you obtain it? This isn't a deal, but a gift. Just then there was an explosion in the distance. Lucifer looked at that and smiled, how about you try out your new power? Lucifer asked Izuku. How do I call upon it? As all Izuku asked. Feel the burning heat within you and pull it to the surface, as all Lucifer said as. He grabbed Izuku and flew them to the explosion in five seconds flat. They had moved so fast no one in the crowd had seen how they arrived. Lucifer then put his mouth near Izuku's ear. Oh, one last thing, when you use your power you will have a slight personality change. Nothing much but you will get more arrogant and prideful because that your sin in the name of your power pride. Lucifer told him. With that said Lucifer disappeared. Izuku looked back to where he was standing and saw Lucifer wasn't there anymore. Izuku turned back around then. Looks like he is done with me for now. Izuku thought as he pushed himself to the front of the crowd and saw what was happening. It was the sludge villain form earlier and he had another hostage, and it was Kachan. Izuku looked around frantically and saw the heroes were just sitting there watching and doing nothing to help Kachan. It was then that Izuku decided he needed to do something. He quickly put his bag on the ground and looked back at the villain. He felt the intense heat within his chest and pulled. The second he did it his body started changing. He started to grow in height and his muscles started to grow. His legs only buffed up a little bit, but his upper body his muscles grew a 100 fold as he grew about 2 feet in height in about 7 seconds. When he finished transforming, he looked at himself. He had torn his shirt, but he knew that could be replaced. He realized he was now as tall or taller than All Might, but a little less bulky. That is when he heard Lucifer's voice in his head, when you start training your normal body and you stockpile more sunlight your body will grow even taller and your muscles will actually get even larger as well when you transform. Is all the voice said before it disappeared. With that Izuku noticed the crowd was staring at him. He looked at them and smiled. He then walked right through the barrier shattering it. He started walking towards the sludge villain with a purpose, ignoring all the heroes shouting for him to stay back. Izuku just kept walking forward. The sludge villain saw Izuku and swung Bakugo in his direction, the second he launched another explosion. Izuku just kept walking through it taking no damage. That shocked everyone, especially the power down All Might who was watching. Didn't that kid say he was quirkless? He thought to himself shocked. The second Bakugo was in arms reach Izuku grabbed him and pulled him from the sludge with minimal effort. He then tossed him back to the heroes. The sludge villain looked at Izuku with utter rage. You pest, I'll kill you, he roared at Izuku as he rushed him. How unsightly, was all Izuku said with his new deeper voice as he pulled back his fist. You are not worthy enough to stand before me, Izuku said as he threw his punch. His punch was so powerful it created a shockwave that was so strong people had to brace themselves from the rushing wind. When they all looked back up, they saw Izuku just standing there with his fist still out, and they saw the sludge villain in pieces. Upon seeing the aftermath, the crowd broke out into cheers. The news crews were already there, and they showed everything. Some of the reporters were remarking how this was the second coming of All Might. Izuku just turned around back to the crowd and started walking towards them. He didn't power down though. He liked this new feeling of power and wanted to feel it more. He also knew that he was currently absorbing about 3x as much power than he was using. So, the power he has already used was back and he was just getting stronger. It was then that he was stopped by three heroes, Death Arms, Kamui Woods, and Mount Lady. Listen here what you did was dangerous. An adult, like you, should know better, Death Arms told. Indeed, you could have gotten yourself or the hostage hurt. You obviously didn't choose to become a hero, so you should leave it to us. Kamui Woods told him. And Mount Lady was just complaining how he took her spotlight and to make up for it he should take her on a date. Izuku just raised his eyebrow at this. I think we have a misunderstanding, his words catching everyone's attention especially the reporters trying to get a story. I am only 17 and a high school student. He told them with a straight face. This sent the crowd reeling. 
The person who saved the day was a 17-year-old kid, and I don't think you should be talking down to someone stronger than you. Especially when he just did your job. Now good day. Izuku then walked right past them grabbed his bag and started walking away. Everyone just stared after him. Even the reporters thought better than to chase after someone who could be comparable to All Might. Both Bakugo and All Might watched after Izuku though. Izuku had been getting weird looks then entire walk home. Well, he was now a 7 feet 7 muscle man with no shirt but still. It didn't affect him as much as it would have if he had powered down. He soon realized that in this form he had a complete personality overhaul. He could live with that though. That is when he heard someone screaming behind him. Izuku stops and turns his head to see his old friend turn to bully running after him. What the hell Deku? When did you get a quirk? Bakugo yells at him. Seeing his angry face doesn't affect Izuku in his powered up form so he just looks at Bakugo for a second. He decides to tell the truth and lie at the same time. I got my quirk today, Izuku states calmly. Bullshit. There is no way you got that kind of power in only a few hours. Bakugo rebuttals. You are correct, Katsuki. Hearing his first name instead of his nickname made Bakugo's eyes widen. I haven't gotten this power in a few hours it has been stockpiling power for years. Today was the first day I ever used it though. Izuku told him. Now if you will excuse me, I must get home. My mom is probably worried about me. Goodbye Katsuki. Izuku said as he turned and walked away. Bakugo just stared after him. Shocked by Izuku's sudden personality shift. His shock suddenly turned to rage though. You damn nerd do you think you were better than me? Bakugo yelled after Izuku who stopped walking upon hearing the shout. He looked back at Bakugo and calmly replied, Of course I do, no one can stand against me. With that, he resumed walking away. Bakugo was shocked to the core at that statement. Izuku had never said something like that before. Bakugo's whole world was turned upside down. The meek scared quirkless Deku was now arrogant, courageous, with a powerful quirk. He didn't know who to deal with all the changes. So, he just buried his emotions and started walking home himself. Izuku made it about two more blocks before All Might appeared in front of him from an alley. I am here, he yelled as he appeared. Izuku just stared impassively at the man who has crushed his dream no more than an hour ago. After a few seconds, All Might powered down while spitting up some blood. Are you sure you don't need to go to the hospital that seems very unhealthy? Izuku said to him with a small frown. Ah, it's quite alright my boy. I will be fine. I just wanted to speak with you. All Might told him. Oh, and what does the number one hero want with me? Izuku asked with a raised eyebrow. I just wanted to thank you for stepping in today. I was out of time and couldn't save that boy. All Might started. You were there? You would have watched him die? Izuku asked him with nothing giving away his emotions. Ah no, you Miz, All Might tried to explain but was cut off by Izuku. It's fine you are weak it's not like you could have helped anyway, Izuku said with a smile. Now if that is all I must be on my way. Izuku then walked right past him. All Might panicked slightly and blurted out his most pressing question before he could ask if Izuku wanted to be his successor. Wait, I thought you said you were quirkless. Izuku looked back at him. I was until I made a deal with the devil, as all he said as he walked away. All Might stood there frozen. Deal with the devil, could he mean, no, no he is dead. All Might shook himself and walked away. I can find him another time to ask him if he wants to be my successor. When Izuku made it home he had forgotten he was in his new form. I'm home, he called out. His voice had shocked his mother as she came around the corner to greet him. Oh, Izuku I have been so, she trailed off when she saw her son in his new powered up form without a shirt. He looked at her wondering what was wrong. Then he saw she was staring at him. He realized the problem. He took a deep breath and cut off the flowing of his power. He slowly shrunk and lost his muscle mass and then looked at his mother. Better. He asked her. Izuku what was that? She shrieked at him. Izuku winced at that. Mom I got my quirk today. He then described most of his day to her, except the suicide attempt in meeting the devil. He described most of his power and told her he kind of has a combination of her and his dad's quirks. He told her he draws in the sunlight to stockpile it. He also told her that he found out about it today when he drew upon some heat in his chest. She believed this theory and story right away she was just happy he had a quirk now. It was that evening when he wrote up his ideas for training his body and for him to start being in the sunlight more to stockpile more power. 
He grinned at this he was going to be ready for Ua in 10 months. Hell, he was ready now, but he needs to prepare no matter what. He was going to be a hero. No matter what. For the next 10 months, Izuku spent every day training both his physical body and his quirk. He found the perfect place to train. It was a beach covered by trash, mountains of trash to be exact. The beach was called Dagoba Beach. He went there every morning after his run and used the trash for free weight training. He had a lot of power yes but, with the unlikely chance it should ever run out he had to train his body as well. It was in the afternoons after school got done did Izuku train with his power called Pride. He would transform and test his limits and then train with the power to increase those limits. On paper, though he had named his quirk Sunshine because he wrote that he absorbed the sunlight and stockpiled it. To enhance him physically and let him use heat-based attacks. With testing the physical prowess, he would also work with the heat attacks he could create. He made miniature suns and launched them in the trash or the ocean. He wouldn't make them over 35% because he didn't want to have to deal with law enforcement. He also made blasts with his heat energy. They were just more concentrated forms of his sons though. With his training, he also had a big increase in food intake. He ate about 3x more than he used to. He also had his mother making him better meals so he could increase his standard muscle mass and help increase his standard height. It was a combination of the working out, working with his power, and his new eating habits that caused Izuku's body to rapidly develop. He now reached a solid 6 feet 1, and he also gained about 80 pounds of pure muscle on his frame. He had lost all baby fat on his face giving him a muscular look. He bulked up as well, enough for people to notice his muscles, it was nothing compared to his powered up form when he transformed now, he reached 10 feet tall and went from 200 pounds to a whopping 700 lb he had to go to a trucking way station to find that out. He also noticed that his personality in his standard form was slowly changing as well. He became more prideful in everyday life and had more confidence. He stopped taking shit from anyone who tried to put him down. He wasn't nearly as prideful as in his powered form but at least he had a backbone now. So, any person that tried to bully him was sent running or was thrown away. Everyone had seen the news by now and had seen what Izuku did. The teachers fearful, let him do whatever he wanted not wanting him to direct his sights on them. The old male classmates tried to get close, but Izuku just brushed them off as weaklings lower than the dirt. The girls on the other hand had all started to become lustful towards him. He just politely but firmly turned them all down if they came forward with a confession. Bakugo on the other hand just completely ignored him or avoided him after the sludge villain incident. Izuku believed it was because of their parting words. Izuku just brushed it off though he would not be the first one to approach him. Izuku didn't just spend the 10 months physically changing, no he trained his mind as well do the best in his class tied with Bakugo. He also kept up with his hero journals and taking pride in his work with them. Izuku had spent those 10 months preparing and it was finally the day of the entrance exam. Izuku walked through the gates of Ue University and just took it all in. That is when he heard a familiar voice behind him. Out of my way nerd, was the command from the one and only Katsuki Bakugo. Izuku just glanced back and didn't move. That is when Bakugo growled and tried to shoulder check Izuku. The keyword is tried. The second Bakugo connected he got knocked back on his ass. He sat there bewildered for second processing what had just happened when he saw a hand in his face. He looked up and saw Izuku looking down on him with his hand out, a small smile on his face. Karma is a bitch isn't it Katsuki? Bakugo just growled and smacked his hand away and getting up with a huff. He then turned and walked towards the main building. Izuku just looked after him for a second. One would think he is more prideful than me. Izuku thought to himself as he started walking towards the building. They had a written exam first and Izuku finished within half the time allotted, he even checked it over twice. So, he turned it in when done and just sat at his desk. After that was over, they were all corralled, into an auditorium. When they were all seated present Mike appeared. Hey, they're little listeners, can I get a yeah? Present Mike shouted out. Receiving nothing but silence in return. Oh, okay keeping it mellow I get you guys. Alright, let's start the explanation. He then went on to explain the rules and guidelines of the test. He told them all there were three kinds of robots each worth points ranking 1 to 3 and their job was to destroy as many as possible to get points. It was then that a random student shot out his chair raising his hand without even being called on he started asking his question. Which was about the fourth kind of robot in the informational pamphlet. 
Present Mike quickly calmed him down and told the whole auditorium that the fourth robot was only worth zero points so they should just run away or ignore it. With that, the speech was over everyone went to the buses that would take them to their designated area. Once they had gotten there everyone got off the bus and either started mingling or mentally preparing. Izuku just stood there for a second, then he decided that he might as well power up now. He was wearing just a standard tracksuit, so he knew he was going to lose his shirt under the jacket. He took off the jacket and tied it around his waist, sorry mom, he thought before he powered up. The entire group heard the tearing and started looking around, that's when they saw Izuku growing in height and his muscles started expanding. They were shocked by how big Izuku had gotten, he now towered above everyone. Once he had reached full height Izuku breathed out and started sending out his power. That is when they felt the pressure he gave off plus the heat. Many were caught off guard and sent to their knees or their asses. Izuku just looked at that and chuckled. That is when the blue-haired boy with glasses showed up. You there, you just can't attack others before the competition it is unsportsmanlike and against the rules. He lectured Izuku. He started saying more but Izuku toned him out. This isn't me attacking this is me just powering up. You will know when I attack. Izuku informed him. Right after Izuku said that the gates opened and present Mike over the speaker yelled, Go! With that cue, Izuku launched himself into the air and into the testing ground. The other contestants watched after Izuku for a moment then present Mike came over the speaker again. What are you doing? The test has already begun. With that exclamation, the rest of the entries shot themselves forward to try and catch up with Izuku. Izuku kept a good pace through the battleground he kept jumping from location to location. He would leap up and see where the robots were then launch himself in that direction. He would completely obliterate robots with single hits. He once found himself surrounded by a group of ten. Three three-pointers, four two-pointers and three to one-pointers. They were circling him. He just watched them impassively. You are just machines that can't handle anyone over average, can you? He asked the robots. They just kept circling but not attacking. Oh well, guess I won't be getting a workout today. Then with a swing of his arm he sent a large shockwave destroying half the robots. He then used a burst of speed to appear in front of each of the remaining robots to destroy each with one punch. Pathetic, as all Izuku said as he walked away. He had been keeping track of his head. With those robots destroyed he just gained another 20 points putting him at a solid 80 points total. He felt no need to rush around to look for more points, he had all he needed. The teachers were watching the testing grounds from the control room. They were observing the entries. A good crop this year, Snipe said. Quite I can just see the potential from here, the head of the school Nezu said. Well I got my eye on somebody, Midnight said with a sultry tone. And who would that be? Asked Cementos. That hunk right there how looks to be bigger than All Might, she replied. Nezu curious himself about this person switch all the monitors to him. That person was Izuku Midoriya II he landed on a group of robots and taking two seconds to destroy them all. Wow who is this kid, and what is this kid's quirk? Snipe asked shocked by the power output this kid had. Hum, this entry's name is Izuku Midoriya and according to his file, his quirk is known as Sunshine. A stockpiling quirk that he uses to absorb sunlight stores it away and then use it to enhance as all his physical aspects or use it to make heat-based attacks. The side effects are it increases his body size when using his power. He also radiates pressure and heat if he doesn't tightly control it. Nezu explained to all the teaching staff. Who just stared shocked at the boy. What a quirk. He must have spent years of practice to control his power so well and to have a store such power must have taken a while. Ectoplasm commented. That's the thing, Nezu started, this boy was thought quirkless up until 10 months ago. Meaning he has been storing sunlight for 13 years without touching it and is still storing the sunlight. Think about how much power he has stored away. He finished jovially. I want him in my class. Was the first thing Shota Aizawa or Eraserhead said this entire time. Don't worry Aizawa he will be in yours, Nezu replied as Izuku was then surrounded by the 10 robots. Nezu turned on the audio for this one. They heard his question and watched as he just swung an arm to cause a huge shockwave that destroyed half the robots. They then watched as he basically teleported to in front of the rest to destroy each with ease. As he walked away, they heard his pathetic comment. Nezu grinned at this. He then looked at the present mic and nodded. Preset mic then pressed the zero pointer button. Izuku was walking when he felt the ground begin to tremble. 
He started looking around until he heard something behind him. He fully turned and brought his eyes upon the Zero Pointer. The robot was ten stories tall and crushing other buildings with ease. Many of the other contestants were running away, while Izuku just stood there watching. He was about to make his move when he heard a yelp and a scream. He looked around and saw a brown-haired girl with a bob-cut hairstyle, struggling under a piece of rubble. Izuku kept scanning through knowing he had heard another voice. That is when he saw it, piece of rubble that was being slowly pushed but nothing but a pair of gloves pushing it. An invisible quirk, Izuku thought. Izuku then blasted forward in a burst of speed. He went towards the visible girl first since she was closer. Izuku appeared before her and smashed the rock to smithereens with one hit. He then picked up the girl and threw her over his shoulder. She was too shocked to react. He then moved and appeared before the invisible girl and broke the piece of rubble she was struggling with. Are you invisible in clothes, or are you naked? Izuku asked her. And naked, she responded quietly. Okay. I am just going hold out my arm you grab it and wrap it around where you are most comfortable, he told her. She did just that. Izuku could tell Hit was around her stomach and lower back. He then picked her up and threw her over his other shoulder and shot off to where the other participants were. He appeared before the glasses one and laid both girls in front of him. There are two girls here and one is invisible and is naked, make sure no one does anything they will regret when I find out, he told him, as the guy just nodded slowly. Izuku then turned around and launched himself forward. When he was 50 feet from the robot, he launched himself upward and at an angle towards the robot's head. The bigger they are, the second he got close enough he threw a punch. It knocked the head clean off the robot. As the robot started to collapse in on itself Izuku still floating in the air now above the robot by 20 feet or so, lifted his hand with two fingers pointed up. That is when he made a sphere of pure heat and power. The harder they fall, he finished his statement. Cruel sun. He then launched the miniature sun at the crumpling body. The second it made contact it completely obliterated the body. Nothing was left but ashes. Everyone, be it the participants, or the teachers were shocked by the attacks Izuku just pulled off. Izuku just slowly descended. The second he landed he started walking back towards the staring participants. He just kept a blank face as he walked. He got to the glasses guy. Did anyone try to do something they would have regretted? Izuku asks. This got the guy out of his shock. And no, no one tried anything they were too busy watching you take down the zero pointer, he replied. Izuku just nodded at that. He then looked down at the girls, now, are you injured? He asked the girls. They both blushed to look upon his god level body, but they could only see one doing it. Am my ankle, the brown haired girl replied. My K knee, was the invisible girl's response. Izuku just nodded, but before he could answer someone spoke to him. Now, now, I am here to heal the injured. An old woman spoke from behind Izuku. He turned his head and saw who it was, ah, recovery girl in the flesh, the best healer in all of Japan and personal nurse to UA. Izuku said her credentials, it is a pleasure to meet another best in their field. I would bow but I bow to no one, he told her with a small smile. It's quite all right dearie, it is just nice to meet someone with such good manners, she said to him with a smile. She then looked down at the girls. I swear I heard two voices answer, she whispered to herself. I am here, the invisible girl informed recovery girl. Oh, sorry dearie didn't know you were there. Recovery girl apologized. Izuku then untied the top of his tracksuit from his waist and dropped it on the girl. Here, put this on, it will help us locate you and let others know where you are, Izuku told her. She thanked him quietly, and Izuku just waved it off. Recovery girl then healed both girls and gave them some gummies so they could get their energy back. They thanked her and she left to help the other students. Izuku was about to walk away when both girls yelled at him to stop. W wait. Both yelled at the same time. Izuku turned back to look at them. Thank you for saving us, they both said quietly. Then the invisible one asked what his name was. My name is Izuku Midoriya, and I hope to see you all in the future as all he said as he turned and headed back to the buses. It had been a week since the entrance exam and Izuku is waiting for his expectance letter. He isn't worried about not making it in. He knows that he made it in, he is just getting tired of waiting for the letter. Then it finally came when he was in the middle of doing handstand push-ups in his room. His mother had slammed open his door to let him know. He just glanced up at her. He then flipped and landed on his feet. He grabbed the envelope and thanked her.
He then sat down at his desk to open it. When he tore the envelope and saw the disk, he placed it on the desk and waited. After about three seconds a projection appeared. The persons who appeared before him were All Might and Dean Nezu. Izuku just raised his eyebrow at this. I am here. As a projection. All Might started. Hello, young Midoriya, and congratulations on your acceptance into UA University. You have gotten first place in the whole entrance exam. On the written exam, you only got one wrong which has only been done a handful of times. As for the practical, you got first place with 150 points. Izuku saw he got that with a combination of 80 villain points and 70 rescue points. That is even higher than I got. I now wish you luck my boy. Welcome to your hero academia. All Might finished. It was then that Nezu spoke. Now, Mr. Midoriya you have done quite well for yourself. I dare say you have some of the most potentials. So, I would like to incline an invitation to speak with you whatever day you move in on. Be it the Saturday or Sunday before school starts. I will likely be in my office. I hope to see you then. With that, the recording ended. Izuku sat there and started to contemplate on what Nezu had said. He wants a meeting with me. That must be because of my high score in both the written and the first place in the practical. That score was higher than All Might's, so they are probably are going to try to get info from me. I should prepare for interrogation. He thought to himself. Two months passed and Izuku was the Saturday morning to move into the dorms for Ua. After tearful goodbye from his mother, he was out the door with the things he needed. The train ride wasn't that long and soon he was at the gates. He had gotten an ID in his acceptance letter, so he walked right through. He was also sent a map to show him where most buildings were. He followed it to his dorm building. When Izuku got there, he looked up and saw how big the building was. It looked like a large apartment complex. He looked down the path and saw more of them. He then knew they were probably exact copies of each other. He walked up and walked through the front door. The second he got through the door he took in his surroundings. He saw the common room was quite large with multiple couches. He could also see the kitchen where he was and saw the stuff in there look new. He was about to walk farther in when a yellow thing caught his attention from the corner of his eye. That is when he saw the yellow eyesore of a sleeping bag. He could tell someone was in it, but the opening was facing the wrong way. Excuse me but, who are you? Was Izuku's question to the person sleeping. The bag instantly shot up into a sitting position and turned to look at him. Izuku just saw a tired and unkempt face. They just stared at each other for a few moments neither saying anything. Finally, the man just sighed and stood up while still in the bag. He then unzipped it, and Izuku finally saw what he looked like. He was a tall man with long black hair that fell to just past his shoulders. He wore a black jumpsuit with a gray belt, black combat boots, and a gray scarf around his neck. Izuku knew this man he couldn't figure out where though. Hello, my name is Shota Aizawa and I am going to be your dorm advisor and homeroom teacher until you graduate, he told Izuku with a dry blunt tone. Izuku smirked at that. You seem like the perfect person for that. Aizawa just raised an eyebrow at that, why am I perfect for it? You look like the straightforward and blunt kind of guy and many people need that to actually learn something. Not float around like this as a fairy tale. Izuku responded. Aizawa hid his smirk in his scarf at that comment. That is a rational way of thinking. Wasn't always like that, but when life gives you a choice, you leave the fairy tales behind and start living in the real world, Izuku told him with a small frown on his face. Aizawa just raises an eyebrow at this. This kid is obviously doesn't like dreams, while well seeing he has only had his quirk for a year now, the abuse or neglect he must have faced made has probably made him cynical. I am cynical too, but maybe I can help him even that out, he thinks. Well, I will give you a quick rundown. The kitchen is fully stocked, the shared showers are on the first floor, the off-campus curfew is 11 p.m. I will go into the bigger explanation Sunday night when the rest of your classmates are here. Aizawa explained to him. Izuku just nodded, I am going to set up my room now. Thank you for your help. He nods to Aizawa then headed for the stairs. Aizawa just watched after him. This is going to be an interesting year, isn't it? It took 20 minutes for Izuku to set up his room. He didn't have much once he got rid of all his All Might merchandise a year ago. He only brought clothes, a laptop, a TV, and his notebooks with his school supplies. He did bring his weights so he could do light workouts in his room. He looked at the clock, at 11 AM. He then looked around the room. He just signed and went downstairs. He found Aizawa where he left him. 
Yo, Aizawa. His eyes snap open and looked at Izuku. Where is the gym, weight room? Auxiliary building. Thanks, was going to work out later wanted to know where the gym was. Aizawa just nods and closes his eyes. Izuku takes a deep breath. I am about to have a meeting with Nezu. Aizawa's eyes shot open. He slowly trails his eyes up Izuku until they are making eye contact. He didn't speak but Izuku knew what his question was. When I got my acceptance letter both All Might, and he was in it. All Might told me my scores but Nezu said he wanted to meet me whenever I had free time this weekend and said to find him in his office. I decided to say fuck it and go see him right away to get it over with. Izuku explained to the tired man. Aizawa just stared for another minute, then slowly closed his eyes with a deadpan, good luck. Izuku just sighed at that and walked out the door. Ten minutes later he was wandering around the main building of Ue looking for Nezu's office. Finally, he found the large wooden western style door. Before he could knock, he hears it come in. Izuku just sighed at that and opened the door. It was a very spacious office, and Nezu was sitting on one of the two couches that were facing each other. He was drinking tea on the other couch was All Might in his skinny form. When Izuku saw him, he narrowed his eyes. Nezu who was facing Izuku saw that decided to ignore it for now. Come in Mr. Midoriya come join us for some tea. Izuku walked over to where they were sitting and sat down on the other end of the couch from All Might. He waited patiently for Nezu to pour him a cup and to hand it to him. Izuku took it gratefully and nodded his thanks as he took a sip. Now, why did you want to meet with me? Izuku asked bluntly. My not very trustworthy, are you? Replied Nezu. After 13 years of being deemed quirkless, you learn to not take anything at face value and question other people's motives. Wise words from someone so young. I would guess being quirkless in this society wouldn't be easy. Izuku snorted at that. It was anything but. The only reason I never went after them for some sort of revenge is that by becoming a hero, I will prove everything they said about me wrong. As Izuku and Nezu were conversing All Might was studying Izuku, trying to figure out how the timid boy he had met a year ago had changed so much. That is quite a goal you have there Mr. Midoriya I hope with the help of Ua you will be able to reach it. Thank you for the kind words, now what is the real reason I am here? Izuku asks finally turning his eyes to All Might. All Might shifted, uncomfortable with the look Izuku had in his eyes. Why yes I want wish to apologize to you after what I said that day. It was wrong for me to crush your dreams like I didn't. I am truly sorry for what I said. He bowed his head to Izuku. Izuku just eyed him. He knew the apology was sincere, but he felt like there was more to this meeting than this apology. All is under the bridge only lesser men hold grudges over such things, Izuku said. All Might rose his head and smiled at Izuku. That's good, now we can get to the heart of the matter. I would like you to be my successor. All Might said. Izuku just raised an eyebrow at that statement. How am I going to be your successor? Simple I will give you my power. Izuku's eyes widen at that. How? He asked softly. My quirk is special it is called one for all. It is a power passed on from generation to generation, hero to hero. All that time stockpiling power and growing stronger. I am the eighth and I wish to pass it on to you. All Might explained to Izuku. Izuku sat there for a moment. After a year something finally shocked him. He was thinking this over, a power that is passed on. That was incredible. Izuku then suddenly froze. He slowly turned his head to make eye contact with All Might. One for all, is that your only quirk? Izuku asked quietly. Yes, it is. All Might replied confused by Izuku's change in demeanor. Nezu on the other hand realized what was going on, but before he could say anything, Izuku cut him off. I used to be a huge fan of you All Might, Izuku started catching both All Might and Nezu off guard. I wanted to be just like you, someone that saved people with a smile on my face to make them feel safe. After you crushed my dreams, I was so angry with you. My room was originally full of your merchandise, even stuff that is no longer sold. The day you crushed my dreams, when I got home, I took it all down, but instead of throwing it all away, I donated it to children in need so they would get something nice. He had Nezu's and All Might's full attention now. I spent the last year training my ass off and training my new quirk to get here. I had forgiven you because I believed you didn't know how I felt. Now I know. It was that moment that Izuku powered up and the pressure and heat in the room skyrocketed. You are nothing but a hypocrite. 
You were once quirkless but the seventh gave you that incredible power. Meaning you knew exactly how I felt and crushed my dreams anyways. You are one of the lowest kind man the one who forgets his roots. At this moment Izuku stood up and pointed to All Might, I will never do that. No matter the quirk be it weak, weird, or they are quirkless I will tell never tell a child to give up on his dreams. Be it to be an artist, a doctor, or a hero. They should at least be given the chance to prove themselves. I will become a voice for the weak and forgotten of this society. The people you forgot about when you gained your strength. So no all might, I don't want your quirk. I'm already the strongest without it. After his speech, Izuku powered down, if you don't believe my words maybe we should have a sparring match. Don't worry just us and Nezu and maybe recovery girl, so your pride doesn't take a hit. Izuku then turned to Nezu, what do you think? Nezu took this all in. This boy has incredible power even without one for all. All Might does have some time. He looked at All Might and grinned. Both could take some punishment, All Might for his stupidity, and Izuku for his pride. Sure, we have some time. I will call Recovery Girl, go to Jin Gamma. Izuku nodded and left. Nezu then looked back to a wide-eyed All Might. Something wrong Yagi? I haven't felt pressure like that since him. That is because no one but him stood close to you in power. You may be right. Twenty minutes later four people were in Jim Gamma. Izuku, All Might, Nezu, and Recovery Girl. The latter two stood off to the side, while the former two stood twenty feet apart in their powered down forms. We don't have to do this young Midoriya. You could seriously get hurt. All Might tried to reason with Izuku. Coming from the walking skeleton. Don't worry I will be fine. So be it then, All Might then transformed into his muscle form. Yes, let's begin, Izuku then powered up as well. He lost his shirt in the office. So, he was shirtless. Remember don't hold back. They stared at each other for a moment sizing each other up. Both having the same thought. He's taller than me. I am taller than him. They both then rushed forward, meeting each other. They were perfectly balanced. They kept meeting each other punch for punch, neither getting a solid hit nor taking any damage. They were causing some loud explosions though and causing a bit of damage to the area. With all the commotion they were causing other teachers came running wondering what was wrong. When they got there, they were shocked that Izuku was keeping up with All Might in a fight. They called all the teachers that weren't nearby to hear the commotion and soon all the teachers of Ua appeared. They went and stood by Nezu and Recovery Girl watching in awe at the battle before them. Ha! Huh. I have to say young Midoriya you are doing quite well. Of course, I am the strongest after all. That is some arrogance you've got there. It is not arrogance if it's the truth, with that statement Izuku used a bit more of. His power to get a solid hit on All Might. It was a gut punch. All Might staggered for a second and that was all Izuku need to grab him and throw him into the ground. When All Might tried to get back up, Izuku then punted him away. All Might was launched straight through a wall. A second later All Might shot through the wall and appeared before Izuku staring at him, his smile now strained. Holy shit, as All Snipe said. He is even taller than All Might, Present Mike said in shock. He seems to be holding his own as well, said Cementos. He can't be real, was Vlad's comment. Aizawa was just standing there, eyes wide. He is going to be a problem child. I can see it now. He then looked to Midnight to see her reaction and all he saw was her staring at Izuku and drooling. Remember Midnight he is ten years younger than you. And is going to be your student, Aizawa said with a smirk. She then glared at him but before she could say anything Nezu spoke up. Yes, but the boy is 18 meaning he is legally an adult, and there is no rule saying a teacher can't date student as long as they consent. That made Midnight freeze and then her eyes clouded over. You're just giving her ideas, Aizawa said, but it is just so much fun, Nezu replied. Before they could say anything else, Izuku spoke. You are holding back. How much? He asked All Might. I am going about 50% right now, All Might replied. I said don't hold back and you use half. You are underestimating me or overestimating yourself. Either way that is an insult. Izuku said, fine then, let's take it up a notch. With that Izuku unleashed more power. They started their clash again, with each thrown punch they kept unleashing more and more power. All Might then saying screw it made a large jump in power up to 100% and punched Izuku square in the jaw causing him to launch back across the gym. He crashed into the wall across the gym. He then slowly got back up. Hee <laughs> hee, 
Now that's what I mean. How much was that? That was a full power hit right there in that last punch. Good. Since you have done me the honor of using your full power, I will show you the same courtesy. With that said Izuku's power skyrocketed. He then put out an open palm and created a miniature sun he then aimed it at All Might, cruel sun, as all he said as he launched the attack. All Might seeing what that did to the zero pointer created a full powered fist and tried to punch the sun he instantly severely burned his hand, but the power of his hit caused him to make the sun explode. When the dust cleared All Might stood there with burns covering his body. Can you continue or are you done? As all Izuku asked. Before All Might could answer Nezu spoke up. I think we should call it, for now, we don't want you both to get hurt, do we? He asked rhetorically. So be it, this just proves I am on his level if not higher. I am satisfied for now. Izuku started walking toward the exit. Just hold it right there dearie, I need to check you over as well. Recovery girl called out to Izuku. Izuku just looked back at her. I took no damage in our spar. With that said he turned back around and walked right out of the gym. This left the teacher flabbergasted. This kid just fought All Might to a draw, made All Might go all out, and still took no damage. They didn't know how to handle that. As they started talking amongst themselves four different people watched after Izuku. One with curiosity, one with shock, one with exasperation, and one with lust. When Izuku was about halfway to the dorms he powered down. He then looked up at the sun high in the sky and took a deep breath. He could feel the power rushing in and filling his chest with heat. He had just fought All Might to a draw, had Nezu not interfered he knew he would have won. He knows Nezu knew that as well so that is why he stopped the fight. He looked at his hand and clenched it. He smiled then, he was getting stronger and stronger. He will be number one. He will be the strongest hero. It the next morning and Izuku woke up feeling refreshed. The day before after his spar with All Might he had gotten a new shirt and did a hardcore workout to burn off some extra energy. He had realized that during his 10 months of training that he can only feel tired in his normal form. He got up and did his daily ritual, he then put on a pair of loose khaki pants and a black tight t-shirt with the kanji for sun printed on it in gold. He walked downstairs to get some breakfast. That is when the front door opened, and some moving guys walked in with boxes and started heading towards the girls' side of the dorms. Izuku just watched after them for a second, shrugged his shoulders, and headed to the kitchen. When he looked in the fridge and freezer, he saw it was completely filled. Aizawa did say it was fully stocked. Izuku thought to himself. He then grabbed the carton of eggs and the gallon of milk. He started then frying up four eggs while drinking from the gallon of milk. That is when he heard a voice. Um, excuse me but isn't that bad manners, since you are going to be sharing that milk. Izuku took a glance at the eggs to make sure they were fine and glanced back to see who just spoke. I was a taller girl standing at around 5 feet 9 with black hair tied up in a spiky ponytail and was wearing a very expensive looking sundress that was white with golden flowers. She also struck an impressive figure with a large chest and wide hips. Izuku could admit she was quite attractive. No one was here yet so I thought it would be fine. After all, I don't have any ailments or anything so it should be fine. Izuku told her, as he turned his attention back to his eggs, he didn't want to break the yoke after all. The girl just stared at him. Is he for real right now? She questioned herself after his explanation. Izuku glanced back at her, you just going to stand there or, he trailed off as she reacted and became all flustered. Oh oh right. Ah uh, hi, I am Momo Yaurozu, a pleasure to meet you, she said as she bowed slightly to him. Izuku Midoriya, you can call me Izuku. He informed her. Is there a certain way you want me to say your name? Oa, oh, uh, you can call me Momo if you like, she said softly. All right, Momo it is. Would you like some eggs? I could make more. That's all right I ate already this morning. At the polite refusal, Izuku just nodded as he turned back around to finish preparing his eggs. That is when Momo got a good look at him. He was on the tall side, but that wasn't all. His muscles were quite large, and he had a strong looking back. She blushed when she realized she was staring at him. She then turned and walked away quickly hoping to get rid of such thoughts. Izuku just glanced back in time to watch her rush out of the room. He just shrugged his shoulders and finished making his eggs. He scarfed them down drank more of the milk then cleaned up after himself. He then walked out into the common and saw Aizawa sleeping on the floor in his sleeping bag. Izuku walked up to him. Have you been there all night? He asked the sleeping man. Aizawa rolled over and looked up at Izuku, no, 
I came out here around 8 a.m. because that is the earliest people could start moving in. Izuku just nodded to that. Well, a girl named Momo just moved in, had a whole moving crew too, Izuku informed the sleep-deprived man. Yeah I saw them the crew already left, he then smirked at Izuku, I also saw her run out of the kitchen with a blush. What did you do? Izuku just scoffed at him. Nothing I asked her if she wanted some eggs as well and she politely refused, then she was quiet for a bit then just ran out like that. I did nothing at all. Aizawa just smirked at the explanation. She must have just started checking him out and got flustered. You're right you did nothing wrong. Now go do your own thing. You only have the day before classes start. Izuku nodded. Yeah you're right, I should just relax today, talk to you at the meeting tonight. Aizawa just nodded and closed his eyes. So, Izuku left the dorms and started to wander all around campus. When he had gotten to Jin Gamma, he heard people talking so he decided to check it out. What he saw was All Might in his skinny form, talking to a muscular blonde, who seemed to be only a couple of years older than him. Now that one for all has had time to digest let's see how well you handle it. All Might said to the blonde. Right. The blonde responded as he drew upon the power and threw a punch. It made an incredible shockwave, but the blonde's arm broke in the process. Izuku just watched on. So, I wasn't his only option. Izuku thought to himself. He said that that quirk stockpiles power with each user. Meaning that blonde guy will be stronger than All Might. Izuku then grinned. I'll have someone else to fight and they will be in their prime. Izuku then walked through the doors of Jin Gamma. That is when he noticed it wasn't just All Might and the other blonde guy, Nezu and Recovery Girl were there as well, along with All Might's old sidekick Night Eye. Well looks like you chose your successor. Izuku says to the group alerting them to his presence. All Might whirled around with wide eyes, Nezu grinned and chuckled, and Recovery Girl just sighed and shook her head. The blonde guy looked him over but seeing the other reactions and seeing that they weren't freaking out he didn't as well, he just smiled and watched Izuku. That is when Night Eye flipped his shit though. Who are you? And how do you know about such things? He asked her more so demanded out of Izuku. Izuku just looked at him impassively. I know because I am the first person he asked and the guy that turned him down. Izuku said in a nonchalant tone like he was talking about the weather and not a government secret. Night Eye widened his eyes at this and rounded on All Might. You tried to make him your successor? Why yes I did, but he turned me down. All Might said trying to maintain his composure. Night Eye turned back to Izuku and before he could say a word Izuku then powered up going to his full 10 feet even height and bulking up bigger than All Might in his big form. Izuku also had the foresight to disregard his shirt first. He then looked at Night Eye, sorry but I don't like to be looked down on by people who are weaker than me. But to answer your unasked question. Of course, I don't need another quirk to be the best. I already am. Izuku informed them. Night Eye just scoffed at this. There is no one that can stand up to All Might. Oh, then why did we fight to a draw yesterday? I would have won but Nezu stopped us. Night Eye's eyes snapped to Nezu who just grinned back at him. He then turned back around to look at All Might. Is he telling the truth? All Might just sighed at that. Yes, we fought to a draw yesterday. I honestly don't know who would have won had we continued. He was cut off by Recover Girl. Midoriya would have won. Your burns were severe, and if you would have continued you would have lost. She informed both Night Eye, All Might, and the blonde whose eyes widened in response. Night Eye looked like fish out of water. Izuku looked at Recovery Girl. It is an honor to have another best agree with me. It is good to speak with you again Recovery Girl. You look as lovely as ever. Flattery will get you nowhere dearie. She replied with a chuckle. Of course not. I am only speaking truths. Izuku then turned his sights on the blonde. Good day. I am Izuku Midoriya and what do you do go by? Hello Midoriya. I am Mirio Tagata third year. One of the school's big three. The now named Mirio responded. Oh, one of the big three, well don't think that your title or your new quirk puts you on my level. I stand at the pinnacle of all quirks. Izuku informed the group. Haha, you are quite prideful, Mirio responded. That is my sin, yes, Izuku informed them. This got confused looks by everyone. Sin? As all Nezu asked. That is a story for another time, so Mirio would you like to spar? Izuku asked. Sure, why not? This sounds like fun. Mirio said with a smile. Excellent. Before Night Eye or All Might could stop them Nezu called them over and informed them this would be good for both of them. 
Mirio would see what kind of power he would be getting and Izuku would be gaining a friend. The two young men stood opposite each other. Mirio was eyeing Izuku knowing he probably packed one hell of a punch. While Izuku was wondering what kind of quirk Mirio must have had. Word of advice, I wouldn't use one for all yet. I saw what it did to your body. Wait until you gain some control over it before you use it against me otherwise, we would be cutting this short because of your injuries. Izuku informed Mirio. Hee hee. I was thinking the exact same thing actually. Thank you for the friendly advice though. You are a good guy. Think nothing of it. I also see you as someone worthy of being my ally. Now let's begin. Izuku said as he shot forward. Before he could even get halfway, Mirio sunk into the ground. This caught Izuku off guard by seeing his opponent disappear. Izuku stopped his charge at this and started taking in his surroundings. It was then that Mirio shot out behind and landed a strike on Izuku's unguarded back. Izuku did nothing at that as he turned around that as Mirio sunk back into the ground. Izuku now knew what kind of quirk Mirio held. A phasing quirk, with the control he is showing he has mastered it quite well. Izuku thought. He was then prepared for Mirio to pop out behind him again. Izuku whipped around and threw a punch, but Mirio just phased right through it. The second their bodies were disconnected, Mirio threw a punch at Izuku's face. Izuku didn't even attempt to dodge and took the punch and taking no damage. He then used that opportunity to grab Mirio's arm and before Mirio could phase through the grab Izuku slammed him on the ground. Mirio stunned by the slam couldn't react fast enough to stop Izuku from doing it again. Then Izuku lifted him off the ground and connected a solid punch to Mirio's stomach sending him across the gym. You were doing quite well. But the second you took any damage your concentration vanished. Leading to you taking more damage than you could handle. Izuku informed Mirio, who was struggling to stand at the moment. Don't worry even though this spar has gone to me, I would like to fight you again. You have a true hero's spirit. Izuku said. He then powered down. I had fun let's do it again sometime as all Izuku said with a smile as he turned around grabbed his shirt, and walked out of the gym while putting it on. Night Eye was shocked at what had just happened. This random first year who had turned down one for all had just waltzed in and defeated Mirio without breaking a sweat, he also fought All Might yesterday to a draw. Night Eye didn't know what to do. Haha, that boy just does as he please, Nezu chuckled. You could say that again. He may act and speak politely while in his big form but there is nothing but pride in his voice, Recovery Girl commented. You know when I met him a year ago, he told me he was quirkless. All Might informed the group, which now included Mirio who now joined them. Night Eye and Mirio looked shocked at this. After he defeated the sludge villain, I asked him about it, he told me he was quirkless until he made a deal with the devil. Which between the time he originally informed me about him being quirkless and me questioning him about an hour had passed two at most. The group started contemplating what All Might had just told them. Finally, it was Nezu that spoke. I am going off the basis that something must have happened to him between your original talk and him attacking the sludge villain. Maybe he prayed to the devil and tried to make a deal and when he saw the attack, he must have activated his quirk. So now he thinks he made a deal with the devil. Nezu theorized. The rest nodded at that. That had to be the reason. Izuku continued his walk around campus. He was seeing more and more students. He knew that they were moving in. He wondered which students were his age level and which classes they were in. He started to wander back to his dorms. The second he got through the door he heard two different squeals. Izuku. Midoriya. That is when he felt two different things crash into him. Good thing he had a weight and height advantage, otherwise he would be flat on his ass or back. When he looked down at the two things that crashed into him, he saw that they were the two girls he saved during the entrance exam. They both were in casual clothing and hugging him tightly. Oh, it's good to see you two again, he said to them. They both looked up at him, the brunette was smiling, and he could assume the invisible girl was as well. When both realized where they were, they jumped back and started stammering. Izuku just chuckled at their antics finding it cute. It's quite alright, but I seem to have forgotten your names. Care to remind me? Ochako Uraraka, the brunette told him. Toru Hagakuri, the invisible girl replied. Izuku just smiled at them. Well, I am glad you both go into UA. Deku. That shout made Izuku look up and see the common room was filled with people. What caught his attention was Bakugo's death glaring at him. Ah Katsuki. I see you got into UA as well, Izuku said with a small smile. 
Before Bakugo could say a word the blue-haired glasses boy from the entrance exam rushed up to him. Hello there. My name is Tenya Iida. I just wanted to apologize for how I acted at the entrance exam. You proved you are the better hero with your selfless acts. I humbly ask for your forgiveness. Iida said with a perfect 90 degree bow at the waist. Izuku just looked at him for a second before walking up to him and grabbing his shoulder and making him rise. That is water under the bridge, it is below me to hold a grudge like that. You will be a worthy ally in times to come. Izuku told him with a grin. Iida looked at Izuku wide-eyed for a second before smiling as well. Izuku then noticed the rest of the class was watching on with different amounts of curiosity. Izuku just smiled at them. Hello there, it's nice to meet you all, Izuku said to them with a smile. Many had the same thought from his smile, too bright. That is when Aizawa decided to appear. Alright, I have spoken to some of you already but, I haven't to all of you. I am Shota Aizawa and for the next three years, I will be your dorm advisor and your homeroom teacher. I have very few rules because you are adults now. The first is to be in a dorm room by 11 p.m., doesn't have to be yours just be in one. And if you are going to be doing something stupid wear protection. The second is I see any inappropriate behavior and I will expel you. The third and final rule, if you wake me up someone better be dead or dying. Does everyone understand? The rest of the class just nodded to him. He looked over the group once and nodded back as he turned around and left. Izuku just chuckled at him, he liked his new teacher. He then looked at the rest of his classmates. Each looked so unique he couldn't wait to see their quirks. Izuku woke up the next morning ready to start his first day of Ua. After he got through his morning run and workout, he had just put on his school jacket when he looked down at his tie. He just stared at it for a minute contemplating if he should even try and attempt to try and put it on. He finally decided against it and just threw it back in his closet. By the time he went downstairs, he realized how early he had gotten up. Others were just waking up or heading to the showers. No one was cooking or eating yet. Izuku just shrugged at this and walked into the kitchen to make himself a hearty breakfast. He made himself eggs and toast as he had some milk as well. He was in the middle of his meal as his other classmates came in. He watched them for a second before he got up, rinsed his dishes, and walked out the front door to head to class. He was sitting there ignoring the chatter around him waiting for Aizawa. The second he gets through the door everyone starts heading to their seats. He looks in the class with a disinterested look. 10 seconds to get you all quiet. We'll have to work on that. He then pulls a gym uniform from his sleeping bag. All of you put these on and meet me outside. You have 10 minutes. With that said he turned and walked out of the room. Everyone just looked at each other then got up and grabbed the uniform in their size. When the class made it out Aizawa was waiting for them. One minute to spare. Not bad. Today instead of going to the entrance ceremony, you all are going to be doing quirk apprehension tests. There are eight in total. First things first. He then looked at Izuku. Midoriya, you got first in the entrance exam. How far did you throw the softball in high school? 110 meters, Izuku reported with a slight gleam in his eye. Okay. Try it now, you can use your quirk but don't leave the circle. Aizawa informs him as he tosses the softball to Izuku. Izuku walks up to the circle tossing the ball into the air and catching it. A small smirk on his face. Once he got into the circle, he put the ball on the ground and took off his shirt. This got multiple different reactions. All the girls started blushing like crazy while the braver among them ogled Izuku like crazy. Some guys were appraising his physique, only a couple were jealous of the attention he was getting from the girls. Mainly a short boy with balls on his head, he was seething, while a blonde with a black lighting bolt in his hair was just slightly jealous but accepting that Izuku had a better body. Izuku looked back at Aizawa, you sure about this? Aizawa just deadpanned at him. Izuku just smirked at that. Izuku then took in a deep breath and pulled at the sun in his chest, he started growing his already impressive height increased another 4 feet. Making him 10 feet tall. That wasn't the only change his muscle mass which was Greek god level started to bulk as well making him even bigger than All Might. Most of his muscle increase was to his upper body, but his leg muscles increased in size as well. Izuku now stood in his power up form. The class and Aizawa could feel the pressure and heat he was giving off. Izuku then picked up the ball and tossed it in the air a few times. He then got into his throwing stance. He then winded up and launched the ball. The second the ball left his hand it made a sonic boom as it launched toward the sky. Izuku just stood thereafter and waited, a grin on his face. 
It took a moment but soon Aizawa's phone went off he looked down at it and smirked. All eyes were on him. He then looked up at the class and lifted the phone. The device read 2000 meters. The class was shocked. He threw it 2 kilometers, FYI 2 kilometers is roughly 1.24274 miles. That's insane. As expected from the person who got first place and destroyed the zero pointer. Deku. Bakugo roared as he launched himself at Izuku. Izuku just turned himself to Bakugo. Yes. As all Izuku responded, as he watched Bakugo run towards him. You weren't this strong before. How did you get stronger? Bakugo yelled. Before he could reach Izuku, he was stopped by Aizawa. Enough. There will be no fighting. Just for that whoever gets last place will be expelled. Aizawa informed the class. This made everyone freeze. Ha ha ha. What a wonderful challenge. But I can guarantee I won't be in last place. I will be taking the top spot. Izuku laughed merrily. The whole class's attention was back on Izuku. Shocked by his prideful statement. Aizawa just hid his smirk in his scarf after letting Bakugo go. Alright let's continue the tests. First was the 50 meter dash. Izuku took first in that one by basically teleporting to the finish getting there in. Oh one seconds. Next, was the grip test which Izuku scored first again by breaking the grip machine. Then, came the standing long jump which was inconclusive because many people launched over the sandpit. Next came the side steps where Izuku won again because of his great speed. Izuku got second in the ball through because Uraraka got first with a score of infinity. Izuku got first in the long distance run because of his unlimited stamina. Seated toe touch he didn't do so hot on because of his size. And finally, on sit-ups, he got first on because of his incredible strength and stamina. When it was all said and done, Izuku did take the top spot. Aizawa looked at the class. Alright Mineta you were at the bottom, so you were being sent to the general course. Every dorm building has extra rooms for just the reason. You have until the end of the day to get your things from your dorm room and get moved into the class 1C. With that Aizawa turned on his heel and walked away. Everyone was shocked by this outcome, none more so than Momo who thought that is just a lie. The only one not affected was Izuku he just looked at the boy, who was on his hands and knees crying his eyes out, with contempt. Where is your pride boy? Izuku asked him. His question caught everyone's attention as well as the crying boy. I don't need pride I need to be a hero. I never even got to see any of the girls naked yet, he roared at Izuku. This made everyone look at Mineta with disgust. Most of the girls were glaring at him and the boys just shook their heads. After hearing that response Izuku released his power. The area was flooded with heat and pressure. He then walked right up to Mineta and grabbed him by his shirt lifting him up look at Izuku face to face. You sicken me. You want to be a hero to get with women, that is the lowest reason I have ever heard. Even heroes that are in the business for money and fame are better than that. You have no pride and no shame. If I hear one complaint from the women in class 1C about you I will personally show you our differences in power. Do you understand me? Izuku ranted to the shaking boy, who just nodded his head vigorously. Izuku then dropped him and started walking away. He picked up his shirt put it on once he powered down. The whole class after seeing what happened were shell-shocked. Many just followed after Izuku to go change. The next day there was an empty seat behind Izuku, it was Mineta's old seat. The first half of the next day was like a normal school. It was after lunch when All Might marched in did that change and take a turn for the better. He told the class they were doing battle trials that day. While he was talking though he kept taking glances at Izuku who just smiled back. Ten minutes later they were all outside in their respective costumes. The only missing person was Izuku. Both Uraraka and Toru were waiting for him while talking to the pink-skinned Mina and Iida. Haha, <laughs> look at all the wonderful costumes. Everyone turned to the tunnel and they saw a powered up Izuku. He had a black long sleeve top that was expanding to his powered form perfectly. He had golden lines running around his costume and golden shoulders. For reference look up Superboy New 52, on his chest, he had a golden lion's head. Escanor's sin tattoo. He was wearing frost white pants with a black belt and black combat boots. The black part of his costume actually ran under his pants, since they would expand with him just in case, he had to use his maximum. Everyone looked at Izuku in awe, he was radiating both power and confidence. Looks like I was the last to arrive, sorry about that, Izuku apologized with a grin. 
It was then that All Might cut in and told the class what they were going to be doing for the battle trial that day. He explained that it would be a two-on-two -two indoor battle trial. Heroes versus villains. The heroes had ten minutes to find the villains and either capture both villains or the bomb. While the villains had to defend the bomb and either beat both heroes or they had to run down the clock. They were about to pick teams. That is when Momo reminded All Might they were short a student. All Might froze then not knowing what to do. I will be by myself. I don't need someone to accidentally get in my way, Izuku announced. All Might looked at him for a moment then nodded. The matchups were, Izuku Midoriya, Team A, versus Katsuki Bakugo and Tenya Iida, Team D. Shoto Todoroki and Mezo Shoji, Team B, versus Mashirao Ojiro and Toru Hagakuri, Team I. Fumikage Tokiami and Suyu Asui, Team H, versus Ejiro Kirishima and Hanta Siro, Team J. Denki Kaminari and Kyoka Jiro, Team G, versus Momo Yaurozu and Ochako Uraraka, Team C. Yuga Aoyama and Mina Ishido, Team E, versus Rikido Sato and Koji Koda, Team F. Izuku was the hero and he just stood across from the building both Bakugo and Iida will be defending. The rest of the class and All Might went to the observation room to watch the match and wait for their turns. Izuku looked like he was relaxing but in reality, he was thinking over his strategy. He knew Bakugo would come right to his fight, meaning Iida would be left to guard the bomb. He would have to take out Bakugo to then search for Iida and either take him out or get the bomb. He could do that. Begin. All Might then called out. So Izuku just walked into the building he crouched under the door a bit, he completely skipped the first floor knowing the bomb wouldn't be there. He was half away through the second floor when Bakugo came around a corner making a large explosion. Ha! Take that Deku! Bakugo roared, thinking he got a good hit. When the smoke cleared it showed Izuku completely fine taking no damage. Was that supposed to hurt me? Izuku asked with a small frown and a raised eyebrow. Bakugo roared and launched another attack at Izuku who just stood there not even bothering to move. Just like the first attack, it did nothing. When Bakugo came in for a third Izuku grabbed the wrist and pointed up at the ceiling, then lifted Bakugo up. Before Bakugo could attack again Izuku landed an uppercut right into Bakugo's solar plexus with his other hand. This caused Bakugo to lurch forward and vomit. Luckily none got on Izuku who then let go of Bakugo and then instantly straight crossed him, to his face launching Bakugo down the hallway. Bakugo was trying to stand, but he kept falling back to his knees. His head was spinning, and he was trying to get his breathing under control. Izuku started walking towards him. So Katsuki, how does it feel to be weaker than someone? Izuku asked him as he kept walking. That thing you are feeling right now, that is what I felt every day before I got my quirk. That helplessness that weakness, that is how I felt every time you lorded your power over me. How does it feel to be on that side of the beatings? Bakugo finally got to his feet panting. He had to crane his head to look Izuku in the eyes. I don't care what power you have Deku, I will always be stronger. Really now, well don't you say heroes always win, so what will happen after I put you down today? That would make you the Deku wouldn't it? It was at that moment that one of Bakugo's grenade gauntlets flashed. Bakugo grinned at that and started laughing hysterically. Izuku just stopped walking and looked at him in slight curiosity. Get ready Deku. These gauntlets store my sweat to make an explosion larger than I have ever made. With one of these, I am going to kill you. Bakugo screamed as he brought up the grenade and pointed it at Izuku. As he reached for the pin that is when All Might's voice could be heard. Young Bakugo don't do it will kill him, he won't die if he dodges. With that Bakugo pulled the pin and a huge explosion came from the grenade. Shaking the building and filing the hallway with countless explosions and smoke. When it was done, Bakugo was panting from exerting. He started laughing again. How do you like that Deku? Seriously? That was your best? With a swing of his arm, Izuku blew away the smoke. He was standing there no worse for wear. Only pieces of his costume were burned or had holes in them, he had no wounds. Bakugo just stood there shocked, his ultimate attack did nothing, not a single thing, not even a scratch was on Izuku. Well since you used a ranged attack I will as well, Izuku said and he brought his hand up and pointed at Bakugo with two fingers. He then made a small sun about three feet in diameter, cruel sun. Izuku launched the small sun at Bakugo would never even try to move. It hit him head on taking out the floor, walls, and ceiling around him. 
With that Izuku knew Bakugo wasn't getting back up. Two minute warning. All Might said with shock in his voice. Izuku then started to run. He ran to the third floor and covered it in 20 seconds when he got to the fourth floor he saw Iida standing in a large room with the bomb. Ah hero, you are finally here, I just have to hold you off for a minute and this game goes to me. Iida monologued. Izuku cracked a smirk at that, he is going all out isn't he? Sorry, Iida but I'm winning this. But how are, he was then cut off as Izuku blasted past him and touched the bomb. Heroes win. All Might yelled. Iida stood there frozen in shock at what happened. Izuku then walked up to him, sorry but I didn't want to hurt you, but I wanted to win. Izuku said sincerely. Iida just took off his helmet and turned to him, with shock on his face. Izuku just grinned at him and patted his shoulder. Iida then grinned at Izuku and put his hand out. Izuku looked at it and took it as they shook hands. Izuku was currently sitting on a bus with his head resting against the window his eyes closed. He and his class were currently on their way to an off-campus site to participate in some rescue training. Izuku's thoughts though weren't on that now, his thoughts were going about what had happened the last couple of days. After Izuku had beaten Bakugo and Iida he went back to the observation room with Iida at his side. When they had gotten back All Might congratulated Izuku on his win and told Iida he had done well. He then asked the class who they believed the MVP was. Momo raised her hand to answer the question. She believed Iida was the MVP because he wanted to be a team player and was the only one trying to protect the bomb. She stated the Bakugo just left him to fight Izuku and Izuku allowed the fight to happen even if you could have avoided it with his speed and just went straight to the bomb. Iida was grateful for the praise and Izuku just patted him on the shoulder with a smile. Izuku then watched the rest of the battles some were more one-sided than others he thought about Todoroki when went through that train of thought. The rest of the day went off without a hitch though. Izuku had a chuckle when All Might bolt out of the room when class was over because his time had run out. The next day Aizawa had brought up it was time to pick a class president and vice president. It was decided they would hold an election for the roles. Izuku got 5 votes, Momo got 3 votes, and Iida got 2. This made Izuku the president and Momo the vice president. During lunch, Izuku told Iida he had voted for him. That caught Iida, Uraraka, and Toru off guard. When asked why Izuku informed them that he may be stronger, but he doesn't mean he should be the leader. He doesn't want the role currently. That is when the alarm went off causing a panic in the cafeteria. Everyone was running towards the exit. Both Izuku and Iida saw it was the media that caused the alarms they looked at each other and nodded. Izuku then powered up and flooded the room with heat and pressure causing everyone to freeze. This gave Iida the chance to inform the student body that it was the media. This made everyone calm down and leave the cafeteria orderly. Once they were back in their classroom Izuku renounced himself as president and gave the position to Iida. He told them Iida deserved the position more since he actually wanted it. Izuku was brought back to the bus when he heard someone say his name. He turned his head and saw it was the frog girl. Hello Suyu. What can I do for you? Izuku asked the girl. Ribbit. Call me Su. Anyway, Midoriya I am a blunt person, so I am just going, to be honest. Your quirk is similar to All Might's with that kind of power. This had caught the attention of everyone around them. Izuku frowned for a second before he gained a small smile. Well if I can call you Su then you can call me Izuku. Izuku then looked around the bus, that goes for the rest of you as well. Now to answer your question Su, my quirk is a bit different. It is actually a combination of my parents' quirks. Izuku lied through his teeth. My father could breathe fire and my mom can attract small items to herself. Mine is a stockpile quirk called Sunshine as long I am in the sun I will stockpile more power, similar to fat gum with fat. I stockpile that solar heat within me and use it to dramatically increase all my physical aspects, as well as make heat-based attacks like you all have witnessed. So, you what I am getting at our power output is similar, but we are certainly different. Izuku's explanation seemed to put everyone to rest. That is when Aizawa announced that they had arrived. They all exited the bus to see they were in front of a large domed building. When they entered the whole class saw how many different climates were in the building. This is the Unforeseen Simulation Joint or USJ for short, Aizawa informed the class. After his comment, the Hero 13 made her appearance. She made a signal to Aizawa about why All Might wasn't there. Izuku was the only one who noticed and just shrugged it off. 
Then 13 went on a whole spiel about how any quirk can be dangerous and that as heroes even a dangerous quirk can be used for good. That is when a black mist appeared on the plaza at the bottom of the stairs. Izuku was the first to notice it. Aizawa I think we have a problem. Aizawa then turned to see what Izuku was looking at. He and the rest of the class watched multiple villains appeared from the black mist. Dozens of villains had appeared but the three that had caught the most attention were the black mist villain, a walking muscled bird monster, and a bluish gray haired villain covered in hands. 13 evacuate the students those are real villains, Aizawa ordered as he jumped down the stairs. Izuku watched after him. He is more of an assassin than an infantryman. This isn't going to end well. Izuku thought and he stayed where he was and didn't follow his class. That is when he heard a voice, he didn't recognize behind him. As he turned, he saw the black mist villain from before. Greetings hero hopefuls I am Kurogiri and we are the League of Villains. The now named Kurogiri spoke to the class. Our mission is to kill All Might. You golden eggs are inconsequential. That is when Bakugo and Kirishima rushed forward to attack the villain. He swiftly dodged their attacks and then spent them through a portal. Then before anyone could react others were sent through portals as well. Izuku didn't move, deeming Kurogiri a non-threat. This is the reason he was sent through a portal as well. When he exited the portal, he saw that he was falling towards a body of water. He didn't panic he knew he would enter the water without much damage. When he entered the water, it took him a few seconds to get his bearings. When he looked around, he saw water-adapted villains swimming around him. The one that looked like a shark rushed at him. Izuku didn't panic, panicking gets you killed. He remembered something he watched on Animal Planet when dealing with sharks. When the shark man got close enough Izuku drew 10% of what he had stored. It only increased his height by a few inches and his muscle mass by 20 or so pounds. He then hit the shark man in the snout as hard as he could with his enhanced strength. The shark man being unprepared for that kind of strength in the water was launched backward a few dozen meters. That is when other villains were attacked by a green blur in the water. Izuku took notice that it was the frog girl Sue. After she cleared the villains around Izuku she launched her tongue at him. When he saw that Izuku cancelled his power, so he wouldn't be heated up and accidentally burn her as well as making himself lighter. She gripped him and together were launched in the air and landed on the ship that was in the middle of the water. He looked at the frog girl. Thank you for the assistance I am at a small disadvantage in the water, he told her sincerely. Don't mention it, but we need a plan to get out of here. They have us outnumbered a lot. Izuku looked back at the group of water-based villains eyeing them from the water. You have all the abilities of a frog, right? Yeah, why do you ask? Just taking stock of everything that can be used to fight these guys. Izuku hummed out as he was still thinking of the best course of action. She just nodded back to him also in the thought of what they should do. I could use a cruel sun but that might cause more damage than needed. But I need a way to make sure the villains are taken care of. The great boy's sticky balls might have been useful here but oh well. Izuku's eyes then lit up. I may have a plan, Izuku told Sue as he turned to her. She looked back at him. Okay, what is it? I am going to power up and launch a strong punch that creates a whirlpool that makes it so all the villains are grouped together. When they are stuck spinning, I am going to use a cruel sun to make sure they are out cold. Izuku explained to her. Um. Wouldn't they drown if they are out cold in the water? I don't know if they can all breathe underwater. Sue asked. Well, I could use enough heat to evaporate the water. Izuku suggested, you would have to jump as high as you can, so you aren't affected by the heat. Sue nodded at that and agreed to his plan. Izuku then took a couple of steps away from her as he called upon the heat in his chest. Heat and pressure shot out from him, as he grew in height and weight. It only took him a second to power up. Okay Sue. The second I launched a heat attack jump as high as you can, Izuku confirmed with her as he looked down at her. She just looked at him with a small blush and nodded. Izuku then took to the air, he shot up about 70 feet when he started to float there. He pulled his arm back preparing a punch. Disappear. As all Izuku said as he launched a punch down towards the water. The force of the punch made an opening in the water 30 feet in diameter. Then the water rushed towards the opening causing a whirlpool. All the villains were caught in it. With that Izuku created a sun half the size of his body. Cruel sun, Izuku stated as he launched the attack. The second it was in the middle of the whirlpool Izuku extended his open hand out. Flare. With that, the water disappeared in a flash of steam. 
Izuku looked towards the boat he launched from and saw Sue panicking slightly as she started to fall. Izuku chuckled at that a little bit as he launched himself towards her. He caught her 30 feet from the ground. They then landed in the now empty lake. They then looked towards where the villains were. What they saw were slightly burned and unconscious villains who were no threat. With that, they decided to head towards the central plaza. Since Sue insisted they should be stealthy even though Izuku didn't care that much it took them a little while to get to the central plaza. When they got there, what they saw shocked them. Most of the villains were out cold but the monster had Aizawa pinned down with the hand guy mocking him. He then noticed both Izuku and Sue. He rushed towards them he stretched his hand to grab Sue's face, but his outstretched arm was caught by Izuku. Now I would advise you not to try to kill my classmates in my presence, Izuku informed the handyman calmly but the hidden threat in that statement was heard by all. Hey an NPC thinks he can talk back to me. Nomu. The villain yelled. That is when a black blur shot towards Izuku who only turned his head and was punched in the face being sent back a few meters. Izuku lifted his head up and a small amount of blood appeared on his lip. Izuku noticed it and brought one hand up to wipe it away. He looked at the blood on the back side of his hand. Huh, interesting it has power and speed close to All Might. Of course it does, Nomu here was made to kill All Might. The villain bragged to Izuku. Izuku raised an eyebrow at that. Su get Aizawa and get to safety at the top of the stairs, Izuku ordered. His tone had so much authority that she jumped straight to Aizawa. That is when the door busted off its hinges. There stood All Might and he wasn't smiling. He took a look over the central plaza and rushed into action. He knocked out all still conscious villains and got Aizawa and Sue into his arms and took them up the stairs. All Might, Izuku is still down there and he is fighting a monster that is meant to kill you, Sue informed the symbol of peace. He looked at her and nodded and was down the stairs and at Izuku's side in a second. Young Midoriya, I know you can handle this, but I ask you to look for your classmates that are still around the USJ. All Might requested. Izuku took a look at him and stared for a minute. Then he just nodded. It will be done. With that Izuku disappeared in a burst of speed. Izuku went to the conflagration zone which was full of fire. He rushed through and found Ojiro holding his own. Izuku came in and took out the rest. He informed Ojiro where the others were. Izuku then went on to search for the others. He went to the mountain zone next and found Momo, Jiro, and Kaminari struggling. Izuku stepped in and took out the one full conscious villain and informed them where to go. He went to the landslide zone and found no one and continued on to the ruins zone and found no one as well. He finally checked to the downpour zone and found Tokiami and Koda. He took out the rest of the villains and informed them where to go. With that three minutes had passed. Izuku landed back in the central plaza. He turned and saw All Might struggling with the Nomu while Todoroki, Bakugo, and Kirishima were watching on. He appeared next to Todoroki. Todoroki just glanced at Izuku but said nothing. Izuku just started walking towards the fight. What's going on All Might, gotten weak in your old age? Izuku asked walking forward. This caused all attention to turn to him even the Nomu, that was only because of the pressure Izuku was exerting. Young Midoriya I thought I told, All Might was then cut off by Izuku. Already took care of it. Since you were struggling so much how about I step in? We both know from our spar over the weekend that I am stronger than you. Izuku said with the utmost confidence. The goddess three classmates and the had villain to freeze. This kid isn't showing All Might any respect, he might not be an NPC but a playable character. Were the hand villain's thoughts. Before anyone could react the Nomu shot towards arm raised for a punch. Izuku raised his fist and matched the Nomu in strength. He saw the reaction to the punch on the Nomu and that caught its attention. The and the Nomu kept trading blows as everyone else watched on. Izuku landed a solid uppercut on the Nomu's sternum and watched as it rippled but the Nomu didn't react. Ha, Nomu has shock absorption. Everything you throw at it, it can tank the hit. The handy villain bragged like this was his most favorite toy. Izuku frowned at that and jumped back from the Nomu. Looks like I'm going to have to use that, Izuku said as he raised his arm in the air and opened his hand then he made a grabbing motion. Nothing happened after 7 seconds right before the handyman started shouting, a piece of the ceiling exploded. When that happened, an object shot towards Izuku, he snatched it out of the air. Izuku was holding a large one-sided golden battle axe. It was close to half the length of his body. It had a small handle for its size fit for only as one hand. 
The handle had a dark green wrapping and on the side of the axe blade, it had a guard with four evenly spaced spikes. Up where the massive curled blade was on the other side of the main blade and the top of the axe two more blades looked like large spearheads. Many looked at the weapon in shock. This is Rita my weapon, Izuku informed all that could hear. He could still remember when he acquired the axe. Flashback Izuku had just launched his strongest punch at the ocean and saw as it split the sea. Izuku smiled at this he was the one with the power now, the power to be a hero. Well look at you, working towards your goal. A voice said from behind him. It was a voice he hadn't heard in five months. The voice had changed his entire life. Izuku turned and saw Lucifer standing there. This time he was in an all-black suit. Black coat, pants, shoes, and shirt but he didn't have a tie at this time. Izuku smiled at him. Been a while hasn't it, Lucifer? It has child, I just wanted to see how your training was going. As you can see it's been going quite well. I can tell. Well since you were working so hard, I think I will give you a reward. A reward and what would that be? That would be this, with that Lucifer lifted his hand above his head and appeared the axe known as Rita. This was the main weapon used by Escanor. It is heavy so only those with your strength or more can wield it. Its main ability is to store the power you have accumulated and launch that heat with precision instead of it going widely around you like you are accustomed to. With that said he tossed the axe to Izuku who caught it. He was surprised by the weight and adjusted accordingly. Izuku then looked at a large pile of garbage and raised the axe. He then slashed the axe. The pile split in two and the now two piles shot in opposite directions. Izuku smirked at that. He then looked at the axe and put about 25% of what he had stored away into the axe. The axe took the heat just fine. He looked back to Lucifer. Thank you for the reward it will help me immensely. Think nothing of it. If I need you, I'll find you. With that said Lucifer disappeared with the sound of flapping wings. Izuku looked back down at the axe. Rita A, we're going to get along just fine. Flashback end. This was a gift from my benefactor, and I will use it to help me achieve my dream. Izuku then started walking towards the Nomu with holding onto the axe and resting it on his shoulder. The Nomu seeing the advancement started walking towards Izuku as well. They stopped five feet apart just staring at each other. Izuku had a small inquisitive look while the Nomu had a blank stare. Ha ha ha, you think you can take on Nomu, that's pretty funny, the villain laughed. Izuku turned to him, I'm sorry I haven't caught your name, what would that be? The name's Tamura Shigaraki kid, not like it will matter anyway, the now named Shigaraki told him as he started chuckling again. Izuku bellowed out a few laughs as well, then in an instant cut the monster in half above the waist where the stomach would be. The Nomu dropped to the ground like a puppet whose strings had been cut. This shocked everyone in the central plaza and the rest watching from on top of the stairs. Hum. One strike looks like I overestimated the creature. Izuku turned to Shigaraki, is that the best you have to face me because if so, you should run now. You, you cheater, you're nothing but a cheater. Shigaraki started ranting while scratching his neck relentlessly. Tamura Shigaraki you need to calm yourself. Remember shock absorption wasn't its only quirk. This made Shigaraki and everyone else in the plaza freeze Izuku just looked at them curiously with one raised eyebrow. Ha ha, you're right Kurogiri, why should I panic? Look Nomu is already fixing himself. That is when a gurgling and swishing sound began. Izuku and the others turned and saw strands of muscle appearing out of the top half of the Nomu and connected with the lower half and it made the creature reconnect and soon it was fully healed. Nomu doesn't just have shock absorption, it also has hyper-regeneration as well. The creature was now fully healed, and it roared out. Now Nomu killed the cheater, Shigaraki ordered. The Nomu then rushed at Izuku, who swung Rita cutting off the raised arm at the shoulder then threw a hard punch right to the creature's face turning its head as Izuku brought up a leg and kicked it as hard as he could. That was enough to disturb the shock absorption and send the creature skidding back a few meters. Hum. I could use Rita but cutting up the creature so much will make me look like a maniac. Looks like it is back to fists and beating the absorption. Izuku thought as he turned so, he could take in All Might and his classmates. All Might, Izuku said catching his attention, hold on to this for a moment. Izuku then tossed the axe to him. Causing All Might to panic for a second, but he caught the axe and then immediately dropped it while still holding on to it. Yeah it's heavy, just make sure it stays in your sight. Izuku informed him as Izuku turned back around at the now-regenerated Nomu and launched himself forward. 
The two powerhouses started trading blows and looked like they were fighting on even footing. The Nomu just absorbed all the hits Izuku got on the creature and Izuku wasn't taking any damage from the hits the Nomu got on him as well. Izuku got in close and wrapped an arm around the creature's neck and then with his other arm started repeatedly striking the creature in its gut trying to cause it damage. After about five of those the creature took damage. Izuku wound up one more punch using all his current output and hit the Nomu in the sternum while releasing the next sending it across the plaza. The creature laid there for a second but stood back up looking no worse for wear. Hee hee, you think you can take out Nomu? Your attacks have no effect on him, he can absorb all you dish out, and what it can't handle it will heal the damage. It is going to kill you and there isn't anything you can do about it. Shigaraki yelled out laughing at the end. Izuku stood there for a second then he raised his right arm up and pointing straight up with his pointer finger. My attacks have no effect. Who decided that? That monster is going to kill me. Who decided that? As Izuku spoke he made a sun as large as his body from his finger. The sun was giving off an impressive amount of heat and pressure. Everyone in the plaza was affected. Just what is this kid? The pressure and heat he is giving off are insane. All Might thought. This brat. Wait don't tell me this kid is a secret boss. Shigaraki screamed in his head. Now for cruel sun I will be the one to decide. The sun above Izuku seemed to get even hotter and brighter than it was seconds before. Now, die, Izuku said with cold eyes as he launched the sun at the Nomu. The creature tried to block the sun but was only enveloped in the sun it started skidding back and soon launched through the air by the rocketing sun. The creature roared out in pain as it was being scorched by the sun the sun launched upwards still enveloping the Nomu. It shot through the ceiling eradicating a part of the ceiling. The sun kept going upward and soon was out of sight. No one could believe what just happened the creature that was giving All Might a run for his money was just annihilated by Izuku who just stood there not even winded and looking no worse for wear. Izuku turned to Shigaraki and the one named Kurogiri. Now since your ace in the hole is gone, do you wish to continue? The way Izuku spoke so calmly and nonchalantly like he was talking about the weather caught All Might and his classmates to just gape at him. Bakugo was just fuming but he didn't say a word knowing he was outclassed here by a lot. You, you, what are you? Tamura Shigaraki screamed out. You were just supposed to be an NPC that could be killed in a second, but you're not. No, you're a goddamn secret boss. That's the only way this could happen. Shigaraki ranted. Izuku tilted his head at this a little bit. Secret boss? Oh, you are using video game logic. I don't play much, but I know enough to get the reference. You see me as a boss that was hidden until you did something to find me. That sounds about right. Izuku said with a nod. Before anything could be said a gun was fired, the shot was heard and Shigaraki was shot in the leg then in the arm as he fell. Kurogiri was at his side in an instant and surrounded the villain. With that both warped away. Izuku and the rest in the plaza looked up and saw the other teachers and Snipe had one of his guns pointed out with the barrel smoking. Looks like backup finally got here. Izuku commented as he walked towards All Might. He then picked up Rita and rested it on his shoulder. We should probably head up there, Izuku said as he looked at his classmates. Kirishima looked at him and nodded with a grin. Bakugo fumed and crossed his arms but started walking towards the stairs. Finally, Todoroki glanced at Izuku gave a curt nod, and followed after Bakugo. Izuku looked back at All Might, and when his classmates were far enough Izuku asked, You good on time, or are you about to power down? All Might cough up a small amount of blood, since you did most of the fighting. I can stay in this form for about another five minutes maybe ten tops. Izuku just nodded, turned, and started walking towards the stairs. He started climbing them thoughts on what had taken place he closed his eyes to focus better. This wasn't a group of punks trying to cause trouble this was a planned attack. They had a science experiment as well. Looks like things are going to get interesting. Izuku's thoughts were cut off when he got to the top of the stairs. The chattering he heard as he was climbing had suddenly gone quiet. When he opened his eyes, he saw most of his classmates and all the teachers staring at him. Izuku just raised an eyebrow at this. Is there something on my face? He asked with a bit of confusion in his voice. That is when everyone realized they were staring, and some looked away others gave him sheepish smiles. Izuku scanned them all trying to figure out why they were staring. Um, partner where did you get that weapon? Snipe asked tentatively. Izuku's eyes widened a fraction only a few got the reaction. Ah, that's why they were staring they haven't seen Rita yet. 
Izuku brought the axe in front of himself. This is Rita she is a gift from my benefactor. It helps with my control. As well as giving me cutting power. Izuku informed the class. Okay. Snipe drawled, but how do you have it now because I would have remembered seeing a weapon that large before. I can summon Rita to me. Nezu appeared now, can you show us? Of course, Nezu. Izuku turned away from the class and launched the axe into the USJ. He waited about 10 seconds before he extended his arm out and made a grabbing motion. That is when they all saw something launch from across the USJ and was heading right at them. When it was close enough Izuku snatched Rita out of the air. He rested it on his shoulder as he turned back around. He just raised an eyebrow the silent question asked. Nezu just nodded his head as he turned away. All right everyone let's head out the police are on their way, Nezu announced as they all started walking out the door. Izuku followed the group when he felt a presence pop up beside him. He glanced down to his left and saw Midnight walking beside him where her hands clasped behind her back. Izuku just looked at her for a moment, she noticed his gaze and looked up to him and gave him a bright smile. That reaction caught Izuku off guard. He then gave a small one back. She brightened even more at his smile and grabbed hold of this left arm which was currently in his pocket as she stuck to him like glue. Izuku was nothing but confused at this action but did nothing to stop it. It didn't bother him much, and it would be impolite to shrug such beautiful women off him anyway. When they got outside many were staring again, and Izuku knew why they were staring this time but didn't care much. That is when the police arrived and Izuku realized it was going to be a long night. Tamura fell through the portal and landed hard on the ground groaning a little bit. By the wounds you have and the lack of the Nomu I am going to assume it was beaten. A voice from a TV monitor from the other side of the room said. Sensei, Tamura started, you're right the Nomu was beaten. And it wasn't even from All Might but a secret boss, Tamura growled out. This caught the one named Sensei a little off guard. Really describe this person. This kid was taller and bigger than All Might he was even stronger. He even used this big axe and used the large fire attack to beat the Nomu. But the thing I caught most was he disrespected All Might calling him old and weak and said he was stronger than All Might. Tamura informed his sensei. Now that caught sensei by surprise. I thought it would have been All Might's successor but if he disrespected him and used heat-based attacks. That means it wasn't my brother's quirk. And All Might's successor wouldn't be disrespectful towards him. What did the boy look like? He had bushy dark green and black hair with shining green eyes and freckles on his face, Tamura stated. All Might called him Midoriya, so that might be the kid's last name. Good Tamura, and it is fine that you failed that means you can learn from this experience. You can rebuild and be stronger for next time. Heal up we'll talk later. With that, the feed to the TV was cut. With that sensei sat back in his chair. This is a new development a hero hopeful who declared himself stronger than All Might and backed up his words. He even acted like he didn't like All Might. The hidden man grinned. This is a new piece added to the board and with the right moves could come under my control willing or unwillingly. With that, the man laughed smugly. The end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.